We have seen previously that given a power series, there is one of three possibilities that happens with the interval of convergence. The radius of convergence turn, could turn out to be zero, for which the series only converges at its center. The radius of convergence could be infinity, for which this th means the interval of convergence will include all real numbers. Or uh, we could have that our radius of convergence is a finite number that's positive. So we have some finite interval of numbers for which the series converges on. So I wanna work through an example of such a thing. And let's identify the radius and interval of convergence. So you always wanna start off with the radius of convergence and you're gonna to wanna to use the ratio test uh, to help you out here. The root test could also be useful, but in practice, I'd say the ratio test is gonna be typically more efficient. So we have to look at the sequence that we're adding up in this series. So we're looking at a n plus one over a n, like so, in which case, we have to compute the limit of ratios and determine when does this thing less than one. Well, for this series, if we look at a n plus one, we're going to get negative three n plus one times x to the n plus one over the square root of n plus two. Notice n plus one plus one is n plus two. And then if we take the reciprocal of a n, we're going to get the square root of n plus one over negative three to the n times x to the n. And let's combine some terms here. We have a negative three to the n plus one. We have a negative three to the n on the bottom. This will cancel out with most of the negative threes on the top. For which case, if we take the absolute value of negative three, we're gonna get a positive three. So we're gonna get three right there. That's pretty nice. The next thing is to look at the powers of x. We have an x to the n on the bottom. That'll cancel with most of the x to the n plus ones on the top. There'll be one x left over. So we get an absolute value of x for which we'll record right here. And then the last thing to do is put together your square roots. You're gonna have the square root of n plus one over n plus two. Uh, notice that this square root is the only part that depends on n. And so as n goes to infinity right here, so we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity, we end up with three times the absolute value of x times the square root of one. Um, n plus one over n plus one over n plus one is a, is a balanced rational function. That'll go towards one. And as the square root function is continuous, we'll get the square root of one, which is itself one. So this becomes three times the absolute value of x. And then we have to solve the inequality. When does this thing, when is this expression on the left less than one? Because that is when the ratio test guarantees convergence. And solving for this, we divide both sides by three. We end up with the absolute value of x is less than one third, which tells us that x will be less than one third but greater than negative one third. So we get this, we get that right there. So now going back to the original question about the radius, I wanna mention that this statement right here is what we are looking for. Uh, once we get that the absolute value of x is less than a, a positive number or the absolute value of x minus a, if the center is something other than zero, if the absolute value of x minus a is less than something, that number is gonna be the radius of convergence. So we can see right here that our radius of convergence here, r, is gonna equal one third. So we found the first bit that with our center being zero, we can go one third to the right, one third to the left, and there's guaranteed convergence there. So our radius of convergence is gonna be one third. Um, we know our series will converge when x is greater than one third. It'll diverge when the x is less than one third. The absolute value of x is one third, of course. So, but what about if the absolute value of x equals one third exactly? What happens in that situation? So this we have to be a little bit more careful about. When x equals one third, we have to consider the sum. When n equals zero to infinity, uh, we're gonna get negative three to the n, but then we're also gonna get a one third to the n over the square root of n plus one. And notice how there's gonna be some combination going on right here. This thing, when you take three to the n times one third to the n, that's just gonna give you one to the n, aka one. And there is this negative sign that sticks around. So what you can see happening is you actually get a sum as n equals zero to infinity. You're gonna get a negative one to the n over the square root of n plus one right here. And so this series is an alternating series. And in fact, by the alternating series test, this series is going to be convergent. Uh, notice that the sequence one over the square root of n plus one uh, decreases towards zero, and so the alternating series test gives us convergence. So in terms of our interval of convergence, uh, we know that x, so for our interval of convergence, 
x sits between negative one-third and one-third. One-third is included. What about negative one-third? Well, the only way to know it for sure is we have to plug in x equals one-third into the power series and see what happens. I don't want you to assume that just because one side converts, the other side necessarily diverges. It turns out, like we saw on this slide right here, um, both sides could, could, could converge. Uh, it could be that the right side converges and not the left side. The left side converges, but not the right side. Or it could be that neither the left or right converges. Uh, we don't know without investigating it individually. So let's try it this time. If we plug in x equals negative one third into our power series, we get negative three to the n times negative one third to the n over the square root of n plus one, like so n equals zero to infinity. Well, this right here, when you simplify the numerator, it actually will just become the sum of one to the n over n plus one, the square root of n plus one. So we're just getting the sum of one over the square root of n plus one. And so when I look at something like this, this tells me that most likely this series is divergent because this kind of looks like it's a it, this kind of looks like it is a p series, right? One over n to the one half power. Uh, you have to do some type of comparison test, right? Removing the plus one on the bottom makes the denominator get smaller. A smaller denominator makes a bigger ratio, um, and therefore we actually could show that this series. Uh, I, I have to make sure I said this right. So if you remove the plus one. The denominator gets smaller, which means the fraction gets bigger, right? And so since the fraction gets bigger, we could, we could actually make a, an inequality symbol right here. This would be, oh no, I, I think I keep on saying it backwards there. I'm sorry, everyone. If you get rid of the plus one for right here, that makes, well, now, now I'm just embarrassing myself, right? Um, if you get rid of, if you get rid of the plus one on the bottom, uh, small, that, that's a smaller denominator, makes a bigger fraction, right? So actually, I'm sorry, that was, means this one's bigger. So that, that's why I'm getting a little bit confused here. I, what I was saying was, was correct, but I wanted to point the inequality in the wrong direction. Uh, so what we have here is that this P series is actually bigger, so we can't, make a, we can't make a straightforward comparison test, but you could easily do a limit comparison test. And so since this is a P series, which is divergent, that would imply that this one is divergent as well. And so since, x equals negative one-third diverges, this wouldn't tell us that we're gonna get a parenthesis right here. And so our interval of convergence will be negative one-third to one-third, where one-third is included, but negative one-third is not included. So we can compute both the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence. And most of your calculations for radii and interval of convergence will look very similar to what we see in this example here.